Joining us now is Pennsylvania Congressman Guy Reschenthaler. Congressman, always a pleasure to see you. Thank you so much for, Likewise, for coming. Uh, talk Thank to me you. about this, if I can, this report here uh, from Logan, a judge granting Trump's request, his legal team, uh, for a special master to review these uh, seized documents there. And I'll, I'll show in part some of the judge's order there, the federal judge. And essentially what it's saying here, and you can read it if you'd like, legal jargon, but it, is, it delays the investigation uh, to a point here. But the bottom line do you see this as fair as finally here's an independent review of what was seized, what can be used against the former president, what cannot, what needs to be returned? Um, because we know they had access to his medical records, his tax records, um, personal information, attorney client privilege, privileged information. How do you see uh, this appointment by this federal judge? Well, I applaud the fact that the federal judge has appointed the special master. Now, we'll see who the special master ends up being, because that's going to determine a lot of how this goes. Sadly, sadly, we've seen the FBI acting as political activists. Hopefully, we don't have a special master appointed that also becomes a political activist. But I think it's very telling in a, in a lot of ways. Number one, what the judge said was actually seized in this raid. Remember, the FBI and DOJ said they were going after classified information, classified material. Why then did they seize medical records, tax documents, uh, gifts that were given? Why did they get article? Why did they seize articles of clothing? It goes to show that this was never about justice or setting up a criminal prosecution. It was a fishing expedition that was politically motivated to tarnish the rival, that likely the rival in 2024 of the current sitting president. So that's number one. Number two, it's incredibly important that there is the injunction to stop the FBI and the DOJ from reviewing these documents, and here's why. Because what will what would very likely happen from the top echelon of DOJ and the FBI is they would selectively leak information, and that information could have executive privilege. It could be privileged under the attorney-client relationship privilege, for example. So this stops the further review of these documents, which, which looks, prospectively looks forward to making sure that the DOJ and FBI, FBI aren't leaking. Because the real danger here, Sean, is that a prosecution, uh, does, I don't think a prosecution will take place, but a prosecution doesn't take place, but a whole bunch of leaks are brought out, dirty laundry is aired, which is completely inappropriate. And there's precedent for this because we saw the Mueller report do that as well. I want to move on to this, uh, if I can, Congressman, on, on what we saw both the current and the former president delivering contrasting speeches in your, speeches in your state of Pennsylvania. I'm curious to know what your, your takeaways were as you saw President Biden continues to label the MAGA Republicans as extremists, calls them Trumpies, calls a heckler an idiot from the stage. Uh, also, President Trump held one of his rallies out there. Clearly, there's some heated primaries, uh, heated uh, races, rather, happening in your state. Sir, what were your big takeaways by both the former and current president being there in Pennsylvania? Well, well just looking at President Biden's remarks, they were completely inappropriate. Not only the image, the blood red, the Soviet-esque background, the, the authoritarian state background, uh, totally inappropriate for an American president, but also the content of that speech calling out over half the American population or roughly half the American population that voted for President Trump in the last election is somehow extremist. And the MAGA agenda is extreme. Look, when you're as far left as Joe Biden in the current Democratic Party, things like having a secure border are extreme. Things like school choice are extreme. Uh, things like making sure Iran never gets a nuclear weapon are viewed as extreme. We are not the extremists. The Democratic Party and the Joe Biden are the extremists. They are just deflecting from what's a horrible record. Now, as far as President Trump's remark, I, remarks, I think he sounded much more presidential uh, than Biden. And isn't it funny that when Biden took the stage at the inauguration, he preached about unity and civility. Yet as soon as he takes office, he demeans half the American population, starts calling people idiots. Uh, so, so it just goes to show the Democrat, the Democrat philosophy of rules for thee, not for me. Yeah, you know, and I brought this up earlier. Again, the equivalent of mean tweets. People were so upset of some name calling that came from the president's uh, Twitter handle. 
But now you're seeing it there live in person, and you would say, well, Trump would say the same. But again, you campaigned, like you said, saying you wouldn't do those things. You would be the one to unify everyone. A, a speech like that doesn't necessarily do it. I do have to wrap it up with the amount of time. Congressman Guy Reschenthaler, good to see you. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks, on. Sean. You too. Take care.